Hello! If you've been one of the lucky few to get hold of an NVIDIA RTX 3000 series card, first of all well done, but secondly did you know you can potentially use that card with Inside Pix Insight, namely the Starnet process, to offload that very complicated and often long drawn out process onto the GPU, thus dramatically speeding up the star removal time. In this video I'm going to go through the process of what you need to do to set that up and I'll also go through how you can remove it as well. Big caveat before we start, this isn't supported in any shape or form by PixInsight and the developers. It could stop working at the next release of PixInsight, but it's very easy to undo as there's only actually one file that we replace with inside the PixInsight directory structure. The other components that allow this to work are NVIDIA downloads that can just sit alongside and don't play any part in interfering with PixInsight other than this single DLL. So if you're happy to do this, carry on watching. So what I'm going to do first is create a baseline and do a Starnet removal using the standard CPU, which means PixInsight out of the box. So here I have a Rosette Nebula image I took earlier in the year. So let's go up to Process, All Processors, Starnet. I'll leave it as 128. I will do one at 64 strides as well which as we know, the lower this number, the longer it takes, but in theory, the better the star removal. We'll move this over here and the Starnet process will start. And just to prove that it's using the processor, we'll come over here. So we've got something that's using 87% of my CPU. If we go into the processors, we can clearly see it's the PixInsight process. Okay, I won't keep you hanging around. I will come back to you when this process is finished. Okay, so that finished. It took 1 minute 27. Not too bad. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this to 64. Still using the CPU. I'm going to undo the standard removal. And I'm going to do the same thing with 64, which will take a lot longer. So I'll fast forward this and come back to you with the times when it's finished. Okay, so that's finished processing. As we can see, it took five minutes, 42 seconds, a significant chunk of time. So let's look at the pieces of software we need to install. Don't worry about scrambling to write them down. I'll put the links in the description below. So step number one, we're going to install CUDA version 11.0 something, not 11.1 .1 or 11.2. These will not work. This is the CUDA download page. You can see there there's a Windows link and that will take you through to download the file that you need. I've already downloaded it, so I'm gonna get on and install that. This is the 11.02, so not 11.2, but 11.0 something. That's the version that you want. Now, when you get to the second part of the CUDA installation after it's done its system check and license agreement, you'll get to the installation options. You need to select custom advanced. And in here, deselect all of the components and then expand the CUDA one and then just click runtime and press next. Take a note of the path where it's defaulted the install to, or if you've changed this path, you'll need to know this path later on. Press next and let it get on with the installation. Okay. So when that's finished installing, we can move to step two of the process which is to install CUDNN version 8.x for CUDA 11. Close this guy down. I'll go to the link that's in the description for step two. And the first thing to point out for this part of the process is you need to register as an NVIDIA developer. It's completely free. All you need to do is specify an email address that you can verify. Once you've done that and signed in, you come to the login page, you agree to the terms, then you want to choose this top one which says download CUDNN version 8.11 and then finally the CUDNN library for Windows x86. This will download a zip file. The zip file you need to then extract into a folder. So I've already done that over here. The contents of this folder look like this and what you're interested in is this bin and lib folder. What you need to do is 
highlight those and copy them and then you need to copy them to the location where the first installation installed itself which if you left it at the defaults would be your C program files NVIDIA GPU computing toolkit CUDA version 11.0 and here we've got the the bin and the lib folder so you literally paste those in there and you'll get a message saying do you want to continue I could just save do this for all items save a bit of time and there we go that's step two complete okay on step three so now we're ready to install tensorflow 2.4 which is this link here again it's in the description and when you paste that into your web browser it will just download a zip file once you've got that zip file you need to extract it I'll just minimize these windows and what you'll have is the following sort of structure the file that you're after here is called tensorflow.dll you'll notice I've closed Pix Insight so for this part of the process you have to have closed any running processes from PixInsight. And what you need is this file. So we're going to copy it and then we're going to move it to our PixInsight folder, which is here. And then we need to go into the bin folder and then we're looking for a file called tensorflow.dll. Now what I'm going to do here is this is the original one that came with PixInsight. So I'm actually going to rename it to .org, it's just what I call original files. And then I'm gonna paste in, again, you might have to press continue, the new one. So we've got two in there. And the reason I do this is, this is the only step we need to undo if we want to remove this feature from PixInsight. We would delete this file that we've just pasted in, this one, and we would rename this one back to the original one. Okay, final stage, we need to edit some Windows system environment variables. So the quickest way to do that is to go to the start menu and just type into here, edit system, and you'll see this option that says edit the system environment variables. There's an environment variables button down here. And then in this screen, we need to concentrate on the one that's called system variables. So the first thing we need to do is add this path to the path variable. Now this is the location you installed the programs in step one. There's a really important bit not to miss is it's got slash bin at the end. So press OK to that. Then we need to create a new environment variable called tf underscore force underscore gpu underscore allow underscore growth and set that to a value of true in lowercase again all this is in the description below press ok press ok close this guy down we've now finished the modification so let's see what happens in pix insight now okay so let's fire up pix insight And then we want to open the same image we were using as our baseline. And then I'm going to get ready with Starnet to do a Starnet removal. And then one extra thing I'm going to do, you don't, you don't need to do this, but it's more just to prove what we've just done is actually working. I'm going to monitor the GPU performance. And the way we can see if it's using the CUDA cores of your RTX card is to go to the GPU and change this option here to say show me the CUDA graph. So you can see it's doing nothing at the moment. And we can also see the CPU as well. So if I drop this over here, Task Manager has disappeared. We'll just click it and bring it back up. There we go. So the CPU is now doing next to nothing and the CUDA cores are at 57%. And we can see over here, the Starnet took 17 seconds. 
So let's undo that and put that to 64. And if we remind ourselves of the timings. That previously took 1 minute 27 seconds, now takes 17 seconds. This next one took 5 minutes 42 seconds previously. Let's see how long this takes. You can see here it's whizzing up really quickly already. Take so I stopped the video, but as you can see, it actually took 35 seconds. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the f did you just say? So that previously took 5 minutes 42 seconds to complete. So it's a massive difference, as you can see, by enabling this feature. Hope you found this useful, and as ever, if you give me a like, that would be much appreciated. If you subscribe, I'll be your friend for life. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye now.